Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Now this is personified as God and his word. And this is supposed to match what Jesus tells the Christians go all in the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say that wisdom stays in the church house. Invite them in to your church. No, it says wisdom goes out in the streets. It goes knocking on doors. It goes leaving out gospel tracts as I used to street preach used to hold signs. Go out in the public. Go ye all in the world and preach the gospel. That's the wisdom. That's the wisdom of God that Jesus Christ, the salvation. It ain't about your church. It's not about your pastor. So wisdom cries without. She, wisdom, crieth in the chief place of concourse. Well, where does activity happen in your city, your town, or your county, or even your state? Where is there a fair? Where is there a flea market? Where is there a, a concert? Where is people gathering in a public place? Now, don't go into Walmart. Don't go into a shopping center uh, uh, parking lot. Don't go inside of a mall and start preaching and all that. That's private property. you got to learn, especially if you get Christian Law Association or another Christian lawyer, you got to find out where you're going. Is it legal? As for us, we, we had a street ministry that we preached at the farmer's market here in Daytona Beach. It was legal for us to be on the city sidewalk. Though they fought us, they tried to get rid of us, they tried to jail us, we were right. You got to know your rights. So what is going on in your city that you can go and pass out gospel tracts? You can go and hold signs. Now I don't rem I I pray for the guy and his daughter. I remember what got me going and holding signs with my family. I saw a a guy and his daughter. I presumed, and they were on the highway. I believe there was a bridge or something. And they were on the side of the highway and both of them held signs for Jesus. That's what got me going. What more concourse? A lot of traffic. What more concourse? A lot of people. And the openings of the gates. Now, the cities and towns in the biblical times, they had walls. And they had gates. You can only enter into the city by a gate. Now, we're, we're looking at, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're looking at a wall between Mexico and the United States of America. Well, there's going to be certain locations where you can cross over the border legally. Well, let me ask you a question. As far as what the wall we have now, and as far as what... Like, I was in San Diego, between San Diego and uh, Mexico, and Mexico and San Diego, how many people are out there with gospel signs? How many people are out there with gospel tracts? How many people are there preaching the gospel in Spanish and in English? Now, maybe there is. I don't know. the Canadian border. Maybe you're in a country that you're on the border of another country.
in the city she others are worth saying. How long, ye simple one? Now, simple doesn't, I mean, we have a bad condensation of simple. And what it's simple is, you know what? They're just normal. And simple ones, as I can recall from the street ministry, would be those that walk by. They don't take a track. You don't think they're listening. They may be. They don't look at you. They don't ignore you. They just walk on by. And you see many of those. Now what's going on between the ears and the heart? I don't know. But they just walk on. They don't do nothing. They don't say nothing. That's the simple. I mean, have you ever been in a store and they're trying to sell you paint? They're trying to sell you tires. They're trying to sell you phones. And you just walk on by. Well, you're a simple. You may have a list or you may have something in tension that you're at that store for. Well, that's simple. I'm going to go get the milk and eggs. I'm not interested in your product. I'm not in interested in your services. If I had wanted that, I would have come and got that. That's simple. Will you love simplicity? You know the hoo-ha of every day. They, as far as what we're talking about, wisdom and the word of God in Jesus Christ is they disregard the truth. They don't even want to hear it. They don't even want to acknowledge. And you can get that with passing out gospel track. You may be holding out a gospel track and they just walk by. You could be preaching the gospel and they just walk by. You might be at work and they just ignore you. You might be at a family gathering. They don't care. And scorners. Scorners are those uh, with the street men. They antagonize you. They make fun of you. They rank on you. They try to upset you. They try to get you to stop the preaching. You're doing they try to interrupt you. They will ask questions like, where did, where, how did Noah get all the animals on the ark? And who, where did Cain get his wife and all that? And, you know, and they, they upset the ministry of the wisdom of the wise. They're scorners. And it says, you know where the scorner is. And the scorners delight in scorn. They're pleased. It makes them happy. It overjoys them to be scorned in you. Their day has not been fulfilled until they try to upset you. And fools. Now it's interesting. Fool. What's a fool? In Psalm 14, 1 says, The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Now you may think atheist. Okay, yes. But in actuality, anybody who has heard the gospel and has not put their faith in Jesus Christ, they're saying to God, because Jesus is God, especially the Jehovah Witnesses. I've dealt with them. What they're saying, the f there is no God. Jesus is not God. I'm not going to trust Jesus. I'm not going to put my faith in Jesus. There is no God in Jesus. You're a fool. And if you stay on that rejection of the gospel, you will enter into the gates of hell, not because God put you in hell, because God is honoring your decision to be foolish. Especially when wisdom cries out. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. When you walk away from those words. And that invitation of that free gift. 
Jesus Christ is the eternal gift of God for salvation. When you turn away and reject that gift, you're a fool. And whether you believe in Mary, or you believe in Allah, or you believe in NASA, whatever you believe, you're a fool. There you are right there. Fools hate knowledge. So when you reject Jesus Christ, you hate the knowledge of God. You hate the wisdom of God, which is Jesus Christ. Now, look over chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. There it is. That's what fools hate. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fool will not put his faith and trust in Jesus. Fools go to hell. Because they hate. There are people out there that hate the Bible. There are people out there that hate Jesus. They hate Christians. They hate the Bible. They hate the church. They hate to hear you. Man, when we preached here in Daytona Beach, there were people that hated it. There would be times I would be sitting down having a, a, a bottle of water, you know, resting because it's hot. They would hate me just being there. You're a fool. Turn you at my reproof. Repent. Repent. Listen to what wisdom is saying. And repent. And get right. Stop what you're doing. Turn. Behold, I will, wisdom, pour out my spirit, there's the Holy Spirit, unto you. And I will make known my words unto you unless you get the Holy Spirit. You're not going to know the Bible. You can read the Bible 365 times in the year. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit of God, which comes by salvation through Jesus Christ alone, not religion, not being a Baptist, you can't get the Holy Spirit because you're a Baptist. You can't get the Holy Spirit because you were baptized. you got to get the Holy Spirit by putting your faith and trust in Jesus. Then the, the pages of the Bible will be open up to you. Then wisdom will work in you. Then knowledge would be in you. Then understanding would be in you. As long as you keep letting the Holy Spirit do His work. And, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and you keep believing. And trusting. In the Word of God. I will make known my, I will make known my words unto you. Because I, wisdom, has called. And refuse. I don't want that. I got my religion. Oh, everybody believes in something. Yeah, you okay. You got Jesus. That's perfectly fine with you. You refused. Whether you were a simpleton, a scorner, or a fool, you refused. I, wisdom, has stretched out my hand. Jesus Christ stretched out his hand on the cross. For your salvation, he was nailed to that cross. His hands were spread apart. As far as the east and the west, that he might accept all that will come upon him, he rejects nobody. Except you that rejects him. The only rejection God will for people is those that reject his son and die. You know, you could reject Jesus, reject Jesus, reject Jesus, year after year after year after year after year. My pastor told me yesterday, I think the woman was 80 years old. And then she got saved. And Christ said, oh, come on in. There's no rejection unless you die without Jesus Christ as your Savior. Then God rejects you. But that was your choice, not his. God has done all he could for your soul. But 
for you have set at naught, zero, nothing. You had no value to wisdom. Oh, you got wisdom on how to how to work on a car. You got wisdom on how to make money. You got wisdom to be a marital consultant. You got wisdom to go to a ball game. You got wisdom to vote. But you didn't have no wisdom in God's gift. God's eternal gift. You said, nope. All my counsel. You know, when a Christian goes out and preaches the gospel, he's a preacher, preacher, you know, preach, preaches. He's also a counselor. He's also wisdom. And I've had many times where I've street preached, past up, and I sat down with somebody, and I helped them, and I showed them. I had one guy one time, you know, he goes, I'm an atheist. Well, I said, listen, do you know what an atheist is? And he was like, no. I sat down and I taught him. And by the end of that conversation, I'm sorry to say, he did not get saved. But I said, you're no more an atheist. He goes, what do you mean? I said, you're an agnostic. Well, what's that? That's somebody who believes in God, but is not sure. I had another guy one time come up to me. He says, listen, he, he's not an atheist, but he's unsure about God. We talked for a while. We opened up the scriptures. And I showed him he was an agnostic. He, he was pleased to learn that. We had a guy on, on Halloween day one time. We met at, at, a, at a picnic area. We had a Bible study. He came over and we talked to him. And he bowed his knee and asked Jesus to save him. And come to find out that we had talked to his wife earlier. Let me apologize. I might sneeze. We talked to his wife earlier. And she was praying for her husband, and we prayed for him. On Halloween, that guy came up to us, up to us. We counseled him, and he put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, that's, God loves that. That's what makes the angels rejoice. And with none of my reproof, and there's a reproof from verse 23. And listen, there are t at least twice the Bible says, a planting of seed and watering it. But there are more than two times every human being will get a witness. And if you reject all those witnesses, your co-worker, your, your family, the person on the street, whatever it is. You're not listening. And you're rejecting wisdom. Now this is God. I will laugh at your calamity. You know there may get to a point in your life that God says, you know what? I've had it with you. Salvation's still there. But you know what? You want to keep on living to be an agnostic. You want to keep on living to be a Baptist. You want to keep on living being be a science. You want to keep on living being a cat. You want to keep on living and rejecting my son. I'm going to laugh at you when you got calamity. Because sometimes the, the best thing for some people... To get saved is troubles and problems, trials and tribulation. And God says, I'll laugh. You're Mr. Smarty Pants. You think Allah's going to answer your prayer? You think if you bend over backwards on a mat that that's going to solve your problem? You think, and listen, uh, Mary was a special woman, but you think Mary, who's dead in the ground, is it listening to you? <laughs> oh, you, you turn to your gods, and God says, I'll laugh. I will mock when your fear cometh. Again. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> yeah, what are they going to do for you? They're dead. 
you lost half of that at the casino. You're going to lose half of that when you go to the restaurant. By the way, when you go to work, next time you go to work, they're going to cut your paycheck. Oh, my, my car, my, my automobile. Yeah, it'll, it'll break down. And you'll have to find a way to get to work tomorrow. Your ball team, they didn't win. And they're not going to visit you in the hospital when you're sick. And when your wife leaves you for a divorce, those statues are not going to hug you. When your fear cometh as desolation, desolation shows up and you are afraid. And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind or here in Florida as a hurricane. Or tornado. Floods. Earthquakes. Forest fires. A riot. They're all over the news. People are losing life and property and family and friends and jobs and money. It's all gone. At a blink of an eye. It could be all gone. Then shall they call upon me. Oh, Lord God, oh, help, Lord, oh, Lord Jesus. Uh, that, that Jesus, that, that my friend at work trusts, the Jesus that the guy preaches on the street, that you didn't listen to, that you didn't obey, that you didn't give heed to the reproof. You said, no, none of that. That Jesus, who is God, I will not answer. You know, there's tons of Americans today. You know, pe people think America's number one. America ain't number one. It's Israel. Israel's number one. You think, oh, you know, we say God bless America. They think God's going to answer. No, God ain't going to bless this country. And it's, it's showing you. America's not the apple of God's eye. Okay? You're not going to get the answers with Trump making America great again when you insult the President of the United States, Joe Biden. When the Bible says you're supposed to pray for him, you're supposed to, supposed to uh, uh, look to him as your leader, not jokes and, and mayhem. You can't treat this President right. Don't you think that God's going to give you a president that's going to answer all your things? God will give you somebody one day. For those who are not Christians, he will give you the Antichrist, and the Antichrist will have all the answers. Christians will be in heaven, being judged at the judgment seat of Christ. You better look, at, you better look out for the one they're looking for to, to make things great. And I'm not saying Donald Trump is the Antichrist. I'm just saying you better look out for that one world leader who's going to solve everything because that's the Antichrist. And he's got seven years before the real King of Kings and Lord of Lords come who has all the answers, Jesus Christ. They will seek me early. You know, the weather catchers will say, here comes a hurricane, Florida. Oh, Lord God, protect us. I ain't listening to you. Every single Saturday, I got that man down there preaching in the street, and you hate him. You don't want to listen. You turn your car stereo on. You turn on that boom box. You listen to the DJ. You wouldn't listen to my preacher. Why should I listen to you?
Oh, my house was spared. Oh, God. No, maybe it was the devil. Maybe it was the devil. Or maybe God was giving you a little blessing for you to turn, but that's not what the scriptures say. By the way, a whirlwind, pretty much there is no warning. A tornado could come and touch down and boom. And the insurance companies call that an act of God. They don't call it Mother Nature. The weatherman may call it Mother Nature, but the insurance company has more biblical sense than the weatherman. It is an act of God. There is no Mother Nature. You can pray to Mother Nature all you want. There is no Mother Nature. Just as much as there is no Tooth Fairy. No Easter Bunny. And they shall not find me. Imagine looking for God. Jehovah. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus. You go looking for him. You can't find him. They send out these, these space telescopes and all that. They haven't found God yet. And they're not going to find God. And they send those little vehicles on planet Mars and all that. You're not going to find God. You may find water or evidence of water. Genesis 1. But you're not going to find God. How many years has space exploration since Russia sent off the first craft in the outer space? You haven't found God. You come up with more more questions than you have the answer. For that they hated knowledge. That's the fool. Now run to verse 7 again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. They don't fear God. No fear. I don't know if they say that expression anymore. But that was the expression when I grew up in, in high school. No fear. Today, it would be no God. And there's only one God today in America. That's the God of America. God bless America. No, it could be any God. Look how many religious activities are going on in America. And listen, America has founded the Seventh-day Adventists, uh, founded the Jehovah Witnesses, the Morons. That's not Bible. That's not Jesus Christ. That's not God. That's the fruits of America. And you sure are not going to get the wisdom and the understanding and the knowledge. But they hate. Listen, America is full. This world is full of universities and colleges. And today, the knowledge is... I don't know if I'm a male or female. I don't know if I should use he, she, it. I don't know that inside the womb of a woman that that's like. But save the whales. I was a cashier when I was 17 years old for a grocery store. I had to count back to the customer. If they gave me a 20, I had to count back their change, including the pennies. They don't do that today. We had one time we were at the grocery store with my wife, Lisa, and we were at the checkout, and right as she handed them a 10 or 20, whatever it was, the lights went on and off for a little bit, then come back on. And that cashier is looking like, uh, and my wife just like that said, "This is how much change I get back." They don't know that. They can't. They can't even speak today. You ever hear? Ever hear a child that's in the public school system? You ever hear him speak? It's ignorant. You ever see all these things? How how they spell things today? That's ignorant. And I'm going to move on. 
did not choose the fear of the Lord, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is beginning now. You are not going to get any knowledge if you choose choice, your choice, not God's, if you don't fear the Lord. He says, Stala, you know so much of the Bible, because I fear God, and I don't fear God to the fullest. They would none of my counsel listen to God's men and women preaching, teaching, witnessing. They despise all, there's that word again, my reproof. They're not listening to the Word of God. And that's today. They're not listening to the Word of God. You've got Christians who will quote Scripture and don't even know what the Scripture says. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Really? I told a Christian one time, he quoted that verse to me. I said, go on top of the Empire State Building, go to the very top of the Empire State Building, take a swan dive down, and get hit by three buses and 46 yellow cabs and survive it. And they looked at me like, Huh? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Now, either you taking that verse out of context, or you don't know what you're talking about. I had a pastor, a pastor of a church one time, touch not my anointed. Uh, 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 that's Israel. Duh. That's in the book of Psalms. That's Israel. That ain't you, buddy. who's now retired out of the ministry. Retired out of the ministry? That was unheard of. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. You're going to get what you deserve. It's a lesson of life and the Bible. You're going to reap what you sow. And you usually get more than what you plant. You may put five tomato plants in your garden. You're going to get more than five tomatoes. Including the green ones. Including the ones that rotted. Including the ones that people stole. You're going to get more. But you know what? Without the reproof. Without Jesus Christ. Without the knowledge. Without the understanding. Without the wisdom. You're not going to rest in peace. You're not going to heaven. You won't rot in hell because you'll be in eternity in hell. In torments. Because you had religion, you had education, or you had science, or whatever you chose. Whatever you chose. For to turn away the simple, there he is, shall slay them. So just bygone reject the gospel, hmm? bygone into hell. The prosperity of fools, some people reject God because, hey, I can make money. I could not do what I am doing now if I was serving God and doing right. And there are Christian, there are saved people who do that. How many Christians still work for the liquor industry? Still work for the lottery? Still work at casinos? Listen, I was under conviction working for the newspaper. I was as a distribution driver. And that bothered my heart. But, verse 33, but... Whoso, whoso shall believe in the Lord, hearkens unto me, you listen to wisdom, shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from the fear of you. Not, not that you won't get no evil, but from the fear of evil. You hearken unto God's wisdom. You do what God tells you to do through his word. Not contrary to his word. It'll work out good for you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Put your faith and trust in Jesus and you'll be saved. 
pray without ceasing. God will bless you. Put your faith in God. A reward. Put your your being in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And your sowing and reaping will be much better. Friend, listen to the Bible. Obey what God has to say. It's for our betterment. It's for our achievement. It's for our good. It's what we should do.